Hey everybody, welcome to the Whiskey Weigh-In. We're just two beards, two glasses of whiskey, and a whole lot of fun. That's what we like to say here, <laughs> even though my wife hates that last line. Mm, I love it. What's wrong with a whole lot of fun? I mean, I think it's a good thing to say, right? I know I'm a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think I could be a whole lot of fun too. Maybe it's just the connotation that's behind that. I don't yeah, know. I don't care. <laughs> uh, so anyways, you want to get into our whiskeys and then we'll do a cheers? Yes, sir. So All what right. we did here... He has a whiskey for me to try that I've never tried, and I have a whiskey, my personal favorite. Cannot be touched, number one in my book, <laughs> for him to try. So I brought none other than the Crown Peach. And let me tell you folks, I found a bottle today and I snagged it up quick. It was the last bottle they had. So what do you got for me? And I actually have a bottle that was gifted to me by my friend Josh from Breakpoint Media. Shout out to them. He does cinematography and videography, uh, photography, all that stuff, photography. But um, <laughs> yeah, look him up for real estate photography, portraits, uh, any video stuff. He's, he's really creative and great, and he's expanding his portfolio as we speak. But anyways, he gifted me a bottle of Basil Hayden's. All right. I've never had it, so I'm excited to try it. Great. I'm yeah, it's very good. It. So it's, a, it's a Kentucky bourbon. So I'll let you have that. And a little side note, I made him drink a different peach whiskey before this just so that he could kind of remember what peach whiskey was like going into the crown peach. Yes, and that was the bird dog peach. The bird dog. Which was my least favorite one the last time we, uh, <laughs> we yeah, tried it. I didn't have any gym. That was a thing. No, that's perfectly fine. Maybe I poured a little more than a taste there. But That's fine. I'm going to pour a little more than a taste here because I just want to know what it's like. Yes, sir. This looks great, man. I've heard so many things about the Crown Royal Peach, how hard it is to get, how Might people well have to possible. go across the state lines and everything. Bring that over here because so, I'm going to be getting uh, back into that. Sounds good. So we will uh, go ahead and cheers. I'm going to cheers to, again, Breakpoint Media. Uh, thanks for the gift and bottle of whiskey. Of and course, um, yeah, you guys look them up on Instagram and YouTube at uh, Breakpoint Media and Pizza Cabra on Instagram. Uh, and yeah, I want to cheers my own thing. What I'm wearing right here, baby, the Philadelphia Flyers. In case any of y'all don't know me, it's Philly everything over here, except for college sports. It's WVU. But yeah, man, Flyers number one seed. We're out here. We're going to win it all this year. I feel it, baby. That's all I got. Let's cheers it, baby. A lot of confidence. I hope so. There we go. <laughs> Mm. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'd say that's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's very good. It's like a very good balance of the sweet and the the liqueur. Um, what is Crown? Crown is a That's a Canadian whiskey. It's a Canadian whiskey, okay. Yes, cool. Thirty five percent. I think it's actually out of Connecticut, though. Like that, I think they have like a place there in Connecticut. I'm like not a distribution center yeah, or something? Yeah. Cool. This is actually really good. thought I had the mic messed up. No, you're good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys didn't catch that last week, <laughs> only my side was recording last week. Uh, so Shay sounded like he was in the background. Even though but, I wasn't. Uh, Got to fix this week. So I tell you what, this is really good. Yeah, Do you know the price like of it? that? Uh, I don't think it's too crazy. I think it's similar to like a Woodford, maybe even a little less. So around the 40 range? Mm hmm Yeah. I might like this better than Woodford. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been a little while since I've had it, but I really do like it, and I enjoy it a lot. It's, uh, I'll tell you guys a little more about it. Um, I mean, it's a Kentucky bourbon, 80 proof, family recipe, spice finish. Um, I don't any, really taste anything the spice. that uh, stand out to you? I get nervous when... Ever I see or read anything that says spiced, I get nervous with that. Just because with like beer, I don't like spice stuff because that's more of like a Christmas thing, and it's like I don't really like it. I'm mm. Not big on it. Mm -hmm. Um, this is really good. I, I'm telling you what, this is up there with Makers for me. Yeah, this is really good. I mean, Basil Hayden's has a really good name, so I'm not surprised to hear you say that. They uh, actually. I, been around for a while. So I guess when Basil Hayden Sr. began distilling his smooth bourbon <laughs> here in 1796, Kentucky was but four years old and George Washington was president. That's pretty cool. You know what? I respect it. That's good stuff. 
Good stuff. Good stuff. Is it better than Crown Peach? Probably not. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> completely different things. Yeah, it's all about what you like. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely would probably drink more of that than I would this, just because yeah. of how sweet and smooth it is. It, this is really smooth. Mm -hmm. That's really smooth. I'm actually impressed. I wasn't expecting it. Like, a lot of whiskeys, you know, you can't really just sit there and drink straight and be fine and just be like, oh, this is super smooth. I want to keep drinking it. Mm -hmm. That right there. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Well, what a relief after last week. <laughs> <laughs> we, had to, we had to come back. Well, we came back strong this week, though. There was yeah. going to be no mess ups here. Very strong. Yeah. There, we, there was no mess up for this week after what happened yeah. last week. Yeah. I like that we keep introducing kind of new whiskeys, not only uh, to viewers that might not know it, you know, about this stuff, but we're introducing new whiskeys to each other. Yeah, yeah, That's definitely. Pretty cool. Yeah. Last week, there were two brand new whiskeys to both of us, Yeah, um, which is great. Um, this week, good. we kind of each picked one that we were familiar with for yep. the other one to try. So um, next week, we'll see what happens. You know, we, we've kind of got a stock going on, so we probably won't bring new bottles on every, every single week. Well, I but, said uh, that last week, folks, but I went in the store today and <laughs> I was searching, just, just looking, just because, you know, I'm dumb. And there wasn't anything in there. And as I was walking out, the cashier said, hey, is there anything I could help you find? And I said, well, I see that y'all don't have crown peach, just like every other place. She said, I got one behind the counter here. Do you want it? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. And that's how that happened. If it would have been any other thing, because they, I'd been talking to him about the crown bourbon. And they actually had that. And I was like, no, I told myself I'm not buying anymore. Mm -hmm. So even, and I love the crown bourbon. I do, and I and the other liquor store had been sold out of it, and I went to this one, they had it, and I was like, no, no, I told myself I wasn't going to do it. Yeah. And the Crown Peach, can't pass. It. I'm telling you what, if any of y'all see Crown Peach, get it. Promise mm. you, you won't be disappointed. High demand for it. High yeah. demand. Like, and low supply. A very low supply. I've never mm -hmm. seen Crown Peach in store in West Virginia mm -hmm. ever. I've never seen it. This was the very first time, and it was behind the counter. So you might always want to ask. Um, to make sure they don't have it behind the counter because they, they just might. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, there's a pro tip for you guys. Always ask the cashier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone working, if you ever, you know, wanting a certain type of whiskey and they don't have it, it never hurts to ask. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Awesome. Well, All right, so we got some exciting stuff to get into this weekend. I guess we'll start with uh, two recaps. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Let's get let's get into the recaps. I'll, I'll start with Weidman. It wasn't like, it wasn't too... Remind everybody who he um, fought. Well, fuck, now I'm forgetting his name. <laughs> Crown's got me. I don't care. It, it is what it is. Weidman fought. It was a decent fight. He he won two out of three. It might have been... Yeah, because then he got a 10-8 round, I'm pretty sure, on one of the judges. He didn't do too great, in my opinion. I mean, he was did okay. But, you know, Chael Sonnen made a great point. He said, do you ever hear anyone calling out Weidman? Mm, yeah, I was no. like... No, I don't. I mean, he has quite a reputation, so... I was like, I, you know what? That made me take a step back and think, you know what? Maybe I've been discrediting Weidman too much. Like, because he's had a pretty rough go. He's lost five of his last six. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't to any slouches. It's mm -hmm. to all top guys. Mm -hmm. Weidman looked pretty good. I mean, I wasn't super impressed with Weidman. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't super impressed. Like, oh, man, old Weidman is back. But he did what he had to do when he won. That's the name of the game. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You mm -hmm. do what you got to do, you win. Yep. That's what it comes down to. That's what he did. Yeah. Um, you got to respect it. I respect it. That's So is Weidman back in, in prime form? Maybe not. We'll see going forward. I don't really know what he does going forward now. We'll see. We'll see what the future holds for him. But I'm, I'm sure getting back on the winning side of things, it'll probably be someone in the top five, six. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's Weidman. You know what I mean? Right. So that, that's probably what I, I think. And I'm excited to hear what uh, your take on the main event, because I know you got to watch it. And, yeah. and you texted me something. I didn't really want to text back because I wanted to be able to get into it on the podcast. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, so I didn't watch it live, but I watched the replay. And uh, it was it was kind of a scary fight to watch. I'll start with the first round. The first round, uh, you could see that Derek Lewis had taken him down, and he was staying on top Which, of him. what in the did you see that coming? Uh, I did not see it coming, but I will say this. In the UFC game, 
the first time I fought Derek Lewis in the video game, <laughs> that is exactly what happened to me. And for whatever reason, he had 30 pounds on that guy. Yeah. Uh, Alex, Alexi Olenek. Yep. Um, he had 30 pounds on the guy, but he was just able to transition and stay on top of him and do ground to pound that whole first round he until the move. end. He got taken down. But then at the beginning right? of the second round, man, it was just uh, it was game over. You know, he got him on the ground and just pounded his face in. But the, even that first round. Lewis surprised me because Lewis kept calling it, it was like a bulldog choke, which I don't know if that's technically the correct term because I think they were calling it something else, but I thought it was a bulldog choke as well. But they, the announcers were calling it something else. But he had Derek Lewis in that bulldog choke for literally like a whole minute. Yeah. And and Lewis said, they I saw in his uh, the press fight there, the interview, that he said that they game planned especially for that, that he, they knew that's what he was going to do. So like he would get hit, like he'd raise his elbow and he would like turn into it because mm. he knew they knew exactly what he was going to do and I'm like wow yeah I mean that that's great um, you know pre- preparation for that and knowing I mean that's a great camp that's yeah. a great coach. I was about to say that's that's ultimately like you can easily see the training camp. Derek Lewis just perfected it for this yeah. fight. Yeah, and and then he had the quick knockout in the second. He wasn't round. playing around second round. No, he, yeah. he came out with that flying knee, and I was like, okay, Masvidal, what are we right. doing here, baby? That was one of the scariest knockouts I've ever seen because I mean it was Herb Dean in the in the octagon, and it took him. It seemed like it took him a few seconds too long to stop that fight you think i mean there's probably three or four punches that didn't need to land i was gonna say two or three i was gonna say so we're right on the same link you said three or four i say say you took two or three didn't you take but it's such a tough that's one job i wouldn't want he so 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 we got the camera angle on the side where we can see that dude getting punched in the face and his head just swinging herb dean he was on the opposite was on the opposite side and didn't see that guy's face so he probably wasn't even sure how many of those landed and how many of those were guarded or against. But I would say that maybe one or none were even guarded against. He just, his face got pounded there for the last few seconds. And just in case there's anyone in here not really knowing who Derek Lewis is, he might be, shit, you can make an argument that he's the hardest hitting person in the UFC. Yeah. It, I mean, he's at the, the top world. one when you talk about knockouts. Uh, so he he's out there in the top. Number one. And that's, he's number one. And that's heavyweight. Heavyweight, exactly. Yeah. Heavyweight. So, I mean, but it is, I mean, like I said, I think UFC, like being a ref in the UFC, that's probably like the hardest thing. I, I don't really think that there could be a harder. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, Herb's always put in a lot of tough positions. Yeah. And, and here's the thing it's not like Herb is bad because. Everyone will tell you he's pretty much the gold standard right. for refs. I mean, he does this like he does like yeah. Ever since Big John's gone, I mean, it's been Herb as the guy. But even even with Herb, like he doesn't even just do UFC. Like he even does like little stuff, like the um, what is it? It's like submission underground, is what it's called, I believe. He yeah. even does that stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like this guy does not take a break. Yeah. From any combat sports, so you know I, he's only put in tough positions, but. Derek Lewis, I tell you what, I couldn't believe when he went for a takedown in the first round. I think that was like the biggest thing for me. I was like, what in the world? Yeah. I didn't see that coming. And I tell you, did you see after the fight, he talked about he didn't want to fight again until he dropped 15 pounds? Really? And I was like, oh, man. Things get a little interesting because Derek Lewis always comes in at the max. Yeah. He comes in at 265. He actually has to cut for 265, Mm -hmm. which is... Big guy. Yeah, that's that's weird. But he said he didn't want to fight till he cut like 15, 20 pounds. Wow. And I was thinking, man, if you cut 15, 20 pounds, you get a little more cardio, which he needs. He needs to have more cardio. Quicker, yeah. And he'll be quicker. That's mm-hmm. the main thing. You hit yeah. on it quicker. Man. And, and, you know, even he said in the in the interview, like, he was like, you know, that he hadn't been training as hard as what he needs to be, that he's just been kind of, you know, it's been whatever. That's mm. a scary thought. Right. That's a scary thought. Someone as good as he is holds the record for most knockouts at heavyweight. You're telling me you haven't been training like you could? And for him to fight that fight so well, I mean, yeah. Maybe he is uh, similar to Masvidal where he's always been good, but he might really shine later in his in his career. He might shine later. Yeah. And that's what I mean, if he really starts working hard And I would love it, that. That would be fantastic for the heavyweight division. <sighs> Did you, man, as soon as they went to interview him, he said something like, can you hurry up? I have to shit. 
<laughs> yeah, I told you, you can't miss it. And then he it. goes, <laughs> he's probably the funniest UFC guy ever, too. Oh, my god. And then gosh. right after that, he goes, he even called the called the interviewer by name. He's what was Felder, the guy's name? I think. Dave. Paul Felder. Right? He's like, Paul, he's like, hey, Paul, I got I to gotta take a shit. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, uh, hello, hello, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. Just so down oh, there. It's funny. I, yeah. I really like Derek Lewis. I'm glad he got that win. That was big. That was a big win. Man, I forgot how smooth this is. You're I right about that, I told you man. it's smooth. It's so good. I can't believe how. I'm. Are you putting it over your, your baby Woodford? Mm. <sighs> I don't know. I've already put Bullet over Woodford from the last episode. That's definitely over the Bullet for me. Last two, I think. That's definitely over Bullet for me. It's right there with Woodford, and man, Makers. I might end up snagging that Makers too. Makers is to, really good. Makers yeah. is really good. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know, man. Those are up there. You know, it's especially cool now because you know I went from just trying everything to now like repeatedly getting a little bit of a taste of everything to being able to honestly compare them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, man. The peach. The crown <laughs> peach. Yeah. So, like I said, I made him do that bird dog peach. Don't get me wrong. That bird dog peach is no slouch. It's still really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll still drink it, but holy whack-a-mole. That bird dog tastes like a, a, a $5 old crow compared to this crown oil peach. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would Goodness agree. Goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely agree. Um, I don't know why Crown doesn't just really mass produce that. Mm-hmm. They're missing the boat. Yeah. If anyone's missing the boat on anything, it's Crown Peach with that. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like everything's out of stock recently, man. I mean, you can't buy a bike. You can't buy anything. Okay, but even before the pandemic, like last year, you couldn't get Crown Peach mm-hmm. in West Virginia. It's always been the case. Yeah. So, no, I'm not, I'm not letting COVID help them on this. <laughs> no. I'm not doing that. Yeah. No. You know, it is what it is. Hopefully they start producing more and people buy more and it'll still be out. <laughs> but, uh, all right, we moving into our main event. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've been waiting for this, but I will so- just uh, tell, tell them what we're going to talk about because I, I get too excited. I get too excited. So we're going to be watching the heavyweight champion of the world, perhaps one of the greatest fighters of all time, yeah. Stipe Miocic, yep. go against, uh, I forget his name. Shut up. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. They call him DC. What's his name again? Don't Daniel? Do- <laughs> Daniel Daniel Cormier? Shut up. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Uh, Daniel Cormier, he's uh ESPN commentator with Ariel Hawani. And uh, he's fought a few times in the UFC, right? He's very good. Come on, man. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this. Yeah, he might look like your pizza delivery guy, but uh, he's pretty good at Greco-Roman wrestling and stand-up grappling um, and getting punched in the stomach. So <laughs> so anyways, we're going to be talking about the fight that is coming up. Is it this coming weekend? Yes, sir. And it is the trilogy of Stipe versus Cormier. Or Miocic versus Cormier. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, and yeah, Stipe's going to hold the title and Daniel's going to retire and be sad. So you, honestly, if no bias, you got Stipe winning. Oh, yeah. No bias. For sure. Yeah. How's he going to win? Um, well, Daniel apparently says he's not going to let him punch him in the stomach. <laughs> and so he thinks that if he doesn't let him punch him in the stomach, he's going to win. Okay. Uh, I think it, I'm going to be this. very simple. I'm going to be very simple right now. I think he punches him in the face and knocks him out. <laughs> you going with a complete <laughs> knockout? Yep. Do you have a round? Uh, oh, don't say it. Honestly, I think Daniel is going to come in so cautious this time that it, the fight's probably going to last a while. I think the earliest it ends is third, but I could see it going four to five rounds for sure. I think that Daniel Cormier tapping. is just... You just gave me three different rounds. So which one is it? What? When is it going to yeah. happen? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I would say late third round. Late Steve third. A, Steve A gets a knockout. Yeah. Knockout. Because that's when Daniel thinks that he has him figured out and he's going to start to get comfortable. You think he's going to put him and in And Cormier is going to try to get comfortable and and start taking shots on Steve A. And he's just going to read him like a book. Daniel, he's too fat and slow, dude. <laughs> he's just too fat and slow. <laughs> Guys that look like me shouldn't be fighting in the UFC. <laughs> and I really hope he never watches this or finds out where I live. <laughs> <laughs> like the baddest man on the planet. Um, so let me tell you what I what I truly think will happen. 
I think this is DC's last fight unless I, I think this is the last fight. I don't really think there's any unless or but uh, unless John. I mean, I don't, I don't know whether think, what else there's left to do for John. I mean, but. even if DC if DC wins this, there's really nothing left for him. Um, you could have a John heavyweight, but DC didn't want it at heavyweight, so I don't see that. I don't see DC cutting to 205 at 41 years old. I don't see that. Mm-mm. So the only thing left would be like Brock Lesnar, but then he's like completely out of it because he's roided out of his mind. So that's out. So I, don't, I think this is DC's last go around. He said it's his last go around, and I don't think there's anything that pulls him back. I really yeah. don't. And he really does seem more fitting as a commentator. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Um, now, I, what, I, what I hope happens, this is what I hope happens with DC in this fight. If he fights smart, he just takes DC down. I mean, he takes Stipe down every round, and then he just kind of is on top of him. And I think he wins by decision. So kind of like Usman fought Masvidal. Or like, push or, him up against the cage. I don't necessarily, I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to get into like a, I mean, DC won the first fight by like getting him in the clinch, doing a little dirty boxing. I don't think you want to get into that with Stipe, but I, I want him like uh, Usman versus Woodley and just take him down and then just complete smother Complete control. Just yeah. complete, and I think he can so do that. If DC wins, it'll be a very boring fight. What did we just talk about with Weidman? You do what you have to do to win. Yeah, I'm just saying. And that's what it is. I'm just saying. I, that's fine. I don't <laughs> care. But I think that's how DC wins. But let me tell you, I'll counter my argument because this is what makes me nervous with DC. I just said he's 41. If he's going for takedowns and isn't getting them, it's going to tire him out. Mm-hmm. It's going to tire him out. And in the word on the street, and I don't you think Stipe's not preparing for takedowns. <laughs> it's not that. I just think that Cormier's that that good. Yeah. Take, I I truly believe that but here here's what worries me with dc he's 41 so he's old and the rumor is obviously i'm not in his camp but the rumor is he came in heavy uh. so he wasted like two weeks of training um having to lose weight yeah and not getting full on training sessions in he's too busy now i mean he he's doing a lot he of is, stuff he's a busy guy he's doing Honestly, a lot of stuff he's a busy guy. i mean you yeah. gotta think him he's got a career outside of the fighting and and what is the UFC? It's not a career. It's a it's an opportunity from and what, from what Dana, done with Dana White has said. But okay. he's turned it into a career by being smart and talking shit on the radio with people who are smarter than him. And somehow he's figured Don't it out. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, but I. That's how I think the fight goes. And if if Stipe can kind of stop the takedowns and doesn't let Cormier control the fight like that. I think Stipe will win by a TKO. I think that's what will happen if if DC doesn't get the takedowns. But I think he should be able to get Great. Him. So we both got Stipe. No. Hell no. Because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you know what the the odds, I looked at the odds not too long ago. Last week when we were talking, they were it was completely even. They were mm. both minus 110. Really? And then now Stipe is a little bit of an underdog. I'm very surprised by that. Good. I'm surprised by that because usually a lot of people don't like DC, and I, I don't really know why. And not just you, just like just the whole community as a whole really doesn't like DC that much as yeah. a fighter. I feel like it's the same thing with Tyron Woodley. Yeah, uh, it's like he's a great fighter. He he doesn't have a terrible personality. Everyone always commends him on commends him on being a good guy. It doesn't really make sense why people don't like him. I think they don't like him because he's just not edgy. He's, he's kind of boring. But he's great at what he does. Yeah. And people just don't respect that enough. I think Usman's almost starting to take that title too. Yeah. After that Masvidal fight. Right. I think I think like Masvidal right now that. is still more of a draw than Usman. Oh, even not after even close. just getting beat by him. Yeah. yeah. Convincingly. Right. I mean, not even close. That's the trickiest thing about this business is yeah. that it's not just sport, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. Which is it's sad, but it is what it is. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you still have to be entertaining. Yeah. So when it comes down to it. But the DC Stipe fight, it definitely scares me, though. It's It scares me for DC because I want DC to go out on top. Mm-hmm. Stipe still has a career left. I mean, he can still fight. Do you know how old Stipe is? I don't know his age right offhand, but I, I think 
If I was to be betting, he'd have to be like mid thirties. If I was betting, I don't I don't know the exact age. I mean, we can somebody can do a fact check on that. Can you quickly tell me what that timer says? Where do I have to click? Just look. Like twenty six. All right. And a half. All right. We got three minutes, and that's going to tick off. I just right. didn't know if we could see it from here. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but I, you know, I I'm just excited to see the fight. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know if I'll be able to get to see it. I might have to just watch the highlights because I don't know that we're going to get the pay per view. But uh, I work that night, but we could split it and then just I come over after work. I get off at midnight, so you'd have to refrain from watching the mm-hmm. the fights, and then I get off and drive right over. Yeah, could do yeah. that. I mean, we could do that. Um, I might actually be able to do that. So we'll talk about it. I will talk off camera, and then I tell you the one I well. I'm really excited to see my boy Sugar Sean O'Malley again against Marlon uh, Vera. Sugar Sean's a big uh, big favorite in this once again. He's always a favorite in his fights. Sugar Sean, if y'all if y'all don't know who that is, that guy's just a a beast. You need to look him up. He's actually started doing his own. Um, he has his own YouTube channel now. Oh, great! And kind of like he does like fight predictions. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. fantastic. But what's really cool is he has like this big like king chair, like a like a throne oh. type. He has like a throne and like he dresses wild. Is it just him? Yeah, and it's just him. That's cool. And it's cool because he does like fight predictions and, and like even yeah. like his own predictions. I wish more fighters did that. They should be on all platforms, honestly. Do well, it just like Askren. Especially YouTube. There's so much money on YouTube yeah. to be made with these and it, fighters and it's because so you have, easy. They you already have, have a name. Exactly. You have yeah. idiots like me that's going to watch just because it's like, man, I want to see what this guy is like out of the octagon. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Even mm-hmm. though that could still be an act, which it you know probably is. Yeah. But people love it. I don't I mean, care. I want to yeah. see it. You know what I mean? I'm stupid. I get it. I want to see it. It's entertaining. It is. Yeah, I, I mean, watch it's just that. the same reason why people watch, you know, WWE. You yeah. get characters, a development. It's a, it's, it's a show. It's art. You know, it really is. And uh, you know, you can discredit it all you want, but not everything has to just be raw in real life. Yeah, that's true. And that, so I think you know, Sugar Sean wins. We're gonna stay on that train. I like how the UFC's done with him. He's became like a, a miniature star. But they haven't pressed the issue with him. Mm-hmm. They've given him decent fights, but not like thrown him to the wolves. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. I, I respect that out of Dana because usually Dana has somebody starting to build a little, gets a little head of steam. And it's like, nope, here you go. Here's a championship fight. Oh. And then they get like, like Darren Till, perfect example. He got destroyed by Woodley. Like he shouldn't have been in there with Woodley because Till was starting to gain that, you know, gain that a little bit of head of steam. Throws him to the wolves. Mm-hmm. But I, I like what he's doing. I like what he's doing with Sugar Sean. It's smart. And then uh, the next one I want to talk about, the last one I want to talk about, um, Dos Santos versus uh, Rosenstruck. Here, let's stop right there. You want to stop right there and restart I'm it? I'm going to take a controlled stop instead of you know okay. being stopped on our own. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Just so I can have a little bit more control over it. Okay, that's cool. All right, so like I was saying, I want to go over um, Dos Santos versus uh, Rosenstruck. Very good fight. Um, I don't know which way this one goes. What weight class is this? This heavyweight. The heavyweight. Junior, Junior Dos Santos. Dos Santos. Yeah, oh, Junior yeah. Dos Santos. Love that guy. Versus uh, Rosenstruck. I don't know. This is a tough one. Uh, Junior's well, a veteran. Rosenstruck, I tell you what, man. Whew. It could be a first round knockout. Who who did JDS fight last? I I mean I, the last time I remember seeing him fight was against Derek Lewis and he he beat him up bad. He did. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah, I mean he's he's just quite a veteran and you would never know how old he is watching him in that octagon. That's, man, and Rosenstruck though. This dude KOs people. He KOs people, man. Yeah. I don't know. This is this could be an exciting fight. I yeah, think let's this, go ahead and solidify what we're, what we're watching at Saturday night. We'll split it. And we'll get it. <laughs> okay. yeah. This one. It's just going to be worth it. I'm telling you, if there was a fight I had to pick to end first round, this one. Yeah? This one. And whose favor? Rosen truck? I, 
I don't know. It could be. Uh, I think it, it could be. A, it could be a Lewis Nangano situation where they're both scared to punch each other. <laughs> don't say that. Because <laughs> it could be. Yeah. I mean, it, but I, I mean, I, I hope it's it. not that. And, and I'm not saying those guys are scared to strike. Obviously, yeah, I'm going to have all kinds of people showing up here. <laughs> <laughs> what have Francis and Gano right at your yeah. door? <laughs> if we ever, like, if we ever get big, I'm really going to have to start watching my mouth. <laughs> You see how Hawaii gets called out for the smallest things. I'm over here talking the worst crap. Uh, yeah, you, know? you are. You yeah. definitely are. Um, this is a tough one. I don't know. I know you're a big fan of Junior. Is that the way you're leaning as Junior? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm also more familiar with him. but Yeah, I get it. Um, I like – I like. I mean, I'm just a big fan of him. Yeah. I think Rosenstruck gets him with – I think he KO's him. KO's him. I think he KO's KO Junior. Mm-hmm. I right. think that's what I'm going to go with. I'll take JDS then. Right, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So we kind of we're kind of going different yeah. ways on two of them. A little bit, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, we'll come back <laughs> with it next week. I don't. I don't have any other fights to go. That's the three main ones I wanted to go over. We talked about the last two from last week. We had some great whiskey here tonight. Yep. I can't really complain. It's been a good one. That. What else you got? You got anything else to go over? Or? I think that that is all I have. Uh, I think we have a lot of exciting stuff in store for the future. Um, but as always, thank you guys for watching. Please don't hesitate to get a hold of us. We'd love to interact with you, bring you on, whatever. Especially Jack. Yeah, Jack. He's, yeah, Jack. Uh, say, I didn't know if he was going to comment. Faithful Jack. He I didn't came know if he in. was going to comment on that last one. He, I was like, man, I think we might have lost him, and then. <laughs> Right at the last minute. Right. Jack came in. He did. Came he in did. in the clutch. So, uh, yeah, you can trust us to come back with the weekly podcast. We'll give you guys a heads up if we go on break. But um, so far, so good. We're back and at it, and uh, we keep growing. And and so thank you for your support, and thanks for watching the Whiskey Way in And until next time, y'all. Peace.